I'm the actually common combination of guitar player and Aquarian, which would be Eric Clapton, Eddie Van Halen, and Jimmy Page. We love to play guitar, but we're also dreaming. We're dreamers. We dream of we dream of weird shit. So you have what Eddie Van Halen came up with, or what Jimmy Page. Both of them inspired me. So what I've brought here tonight are kind of a few examples of kind of how I take a normal guitar, which I don't really want to play anything normal, and mess it up and change it and try to make it better to make it do other things that other guitar players might not be able to do. Uh, this guitar, for example, has a really cool sustainer on the neck that makes it feed back like Jimi Hendrix, like insane. It's got a unit in here and batteries and it feeds back like crazy. So I'm gonna use that tonight and I'm gonna explain to the players and, and the non-players how it works and why it works. I can show you, not even plugged in. So that's the sound of the guitar going through the amplifier and right back up into the neck. That would be like Jimi Hendrix standing in front of his 9,000 watts of Marshalls. But instead, a really cool guy from Indianapolis invented a way to send the power right back up into the neck. So this is from the 80s. Nobody has them except George Lynch, my idol. One of my idols, George Lynch, has a few of them and he uses them a lot in his style. So I grabbed one and I built it into this guitar and one other guitar that we use in Wasp. And that's one of the things I'll show. And then uh, this one isn't mine, but I'm gonna demonstrate singing and playing, uh, singing acoustic songs and, and being like a solo uh, artist or solo singer songwriter with that, which is actually the basis of all the stuff we do anyway. This one here is a combination of an acoustic guitar and an electric guitar in one body. So I've made a bunch of those and other people in Sweden and Finland have them. And I've got four of them and I use them with Wasp and I use them with a lot of other music to be able to play acoustic guitar and switch right to electric guitar or actually let them feed off of each other, which is really fun. That's called a mutant twin. And the one next to it, farthest right, is a is an ESP uh, EC model that I use on stage. I've got four matching ones that have the saw blade, the plastic saw blade kind of pick guard thing just for visuals and it's got a scalloped fingerboard and some other kind of knick-knack kind of details that make it a little more custom and a little more um, unique for my own style and playing. And um, so that's all I could bring on the train and the bus. I tried to bring more, but it would have broken my face. So I brought my amplifier, which is a digital modeling unit, and my pedal board, which lets me control the sound around the room. So those things I'm all gonna talk about uh, with, the, with the players alike and the non-players and just show them how nowadays with everything becoming smaller and computerized, you can really have a million sounds right there in your box and you can manipulate not only speakers in the front, we can use speakers in the back. So I'm gonna demonstrate how I'm using some sound that comes out the back of the room and it really easily to control it by the pedal and by playing the guitar a certain way. So that's what, I'm, uh, that's what I love to do is bring these and try to inspire younger players to you know, think a little bit outside the box. I mean, everybody plays a Tele, everybody plays a Strat, everybody plays a Les Paul, everybody plugs into their uh, Quad Cortex or their Helix or whatever they buy nowadays. And the advantage now is there's, a, there's exponentially more possibilities in those pieces of equipment than we ever had in the simple amplifier and a couple effect pedals that we grew up playing and using. And even with the limitations of one amplifier and a couple of pedals, we were able to, to get a lot of uh, different sounds out of the guitar with the pickups and the tone control. So now my guitar students you know, have digital modeling units with a thousand patches. And they have guitars that have you know, really well-built guitars for a lower price. So younger players have a big advantage to have a lot better equipment to start out with. And I'm trying to just try to open their minds to see it as a chance of a lot of opportunity and not just copying 
what other people have done because of course one of the big advantages of those units is they can digitally copy any sound ever made. <laughs> so the idea is to keep trying to make new sounds somehow that other people haven't made before. So I like guys like uh, the guy in the Muse and the Edge and U2 and Eddie Van Halen and Jimmy Page and Jimi Hendrix and uh, guys that Steve Vai, guys that have taken a normal guitar and taken it to the next stratospheric level by just being imaginative. So that's why I brought these particular guitars and now they're quite dirty. I need to clean them all. I need to shine them all up. This is a beautiful ovation. I grew up one hour from the factory that built these guitars in Connecticut, in USA. And I just need to mention that because it's super important to that guitar. So I hang around the factory so much that I got to know the head of, um, the head of design, uh, R&D, research and design. His name was Don Johnson and he probably worked on quite a few pieces of this particular guitar. But I remember going to him and saying, I want to make a double neck so that my guitar doesn't keep falling on the ground and breaking when I'm trying to use it. And I explained to him how big the body would be, and he thought it wouldn't quite be big enough. He said this hollow section, which is under there, might not quite be enough. But he gave me good advice and said, try it, try it, and see if it works. So the first double neck that I made, which I unfortunately don't have here with me, he helped me a, a real lot build that first one. He gave me the bridge and the pickup for the acoustic, and he helped me with the design all the way through. So he helped me get that guitar working, and then guess what? That guitar got me the job in Wasp in 1992. So if Don Johnson from Ovation Guitars hadn't believed in my crazy idea to make a small double neck that has an acoustic neck on the top and an electric neck on the bottom. If he thought, nah, that's crazy, don't do it, I might never have done it. But he gave me the motivation and the, and the courage to try it. All right, I'm sorry I keep talking and talking and talking. Thank you and have a great evening. All right. Stand